Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about Hanukkah and some tips and tricks on how to enhance the experience. Welcome to the Mommy Life Squad podcast where we talk about everything women want to hear about, which may get controversial, but definitely inspirational, so stay tuned. Okay, Hanukkah is just, just around the corner. Wait, we're laughing because we re-recorded this like 17 times, and this is the last time we are not recording this. Don't touch it, Tikva. Okay. We are we are going to keep this version because <laughs> we keep making mistakes and we keep starting it all over again. All right, so here we go. Hanukkah is this Thursday night. We are trying to give you some inspiration, some tips and tricks, um, stuff that worked for us, right? Yes. All right, so let's get into it. Okay, so um, first let's talk about maybe some inspiration for Hanukkah. So Hanukkah seems like, especially in LA, I don't know about other states, but we have like every night of Hanukkah, there's a different event and a different yeah, thing, something going, something on, going on, for on the Third kids. Street and Santa Monica Pier. Um, really all over, yeah. Honestly, it's really beautiful. It's so beautiful, but sometimes we have to like take a step back and be like, right? Like, what is the purpose of Hanukkah? Right. Hanukkah is a time that we get to be at home with our kids. We get to enjoy our family. We get to eat oily foods. Eat yeah. oily foods. <laughs> no, yeah. but it's also a really important time for prayer yeah. and davening. And a lot of times I remember like last year I kind of tried to, I made an extra effort to, to sit down and daven. Mm-hmm. But a lot of times with everything being so hectic that we kind of forget. And like it's so important to just sit down by the menorah and take yeah. time to read to Hillim, Amenis, right. or just. Daven, pour your heart out, heart out to Hashem. There's so much we could daven for right now, and it's such an, such an, such an important time. Important time. Thank you. <laughs> and by the way, why do they like write on the like the flyers for these Hanukkah parties, like the time that starts like four thirty or five forty five, like exactly when candle lighting is? Like I find that so ironic because my kids want to get there on time. Yes. <laughs> so it happens to be that like what you're saying is true, but it's really hard to put into practice, right? Because our kids just want to go to a party every night. Yeah, especially, so the the reason why I was saying especially in LA, because I feel like LA has a lot of cure of and outreach. Yeah. um, And a lot of these events are actually catered for them. For them. To, to, they want to grab the people who aren't lighting the menorah and they want them to come to this cool concert and light the menorah with them there. Yeah. Which is beautiful. But for someone who is going to light at home, it could take away from that because you're rushing out the door, let's, let's light, let's light, let's light, and then yeah. rushing out the door, and then you're yeah. missing the meaning of Hanukkah. Right, the purpose. The right. purpose. Right, I agree. I think that's a very important part to re- reflect and see, like, I guess also to, like, really understand where we're going for every night. Like, it doesn't have to be that we're, you know, rushing to every party, but some parties I feel like our kids will gain from. You yes. know, like, there are some that are really cute and very... I'm not um, saying sit at home and not do anything the whole time. That's yeah. not what I'm saying. I'm saying is just yeah, take a moment and appreciate lighting the menorah with your family. That could also... Like, that's also an event right. in itself. Yeah. You don't need to go to a concert every night. Right. And on that topic, um, so a minhag that we do every year is... Um, there's this like big segula. I know a lot of people already know about this, but it's important to write down on a piece of paper something that you're hoping or praying for, for yourself. So like if a mother wants to have a child or if you want better parnasa or if you need your daughter to get married, a shidduch, whatever. So you write that on the piece of paper and you keep it there for eight nights. I think that's how it goes. That's what we do. At least we put it under our... So I do the last night on the eighth night. Oh, oh, yes. I think, yeah, I think you're right. I think it's the eighth night. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I think that's what it is. You write a note right. and you put it under the menorah. The menorah. And then, um, and then you put, so we pull it out every year. So from, we have every, I think we've been doing it for five years now. So we pull out from previous years and it's really nice to read it and see. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. But also the whole Indian is to be Mafar same the nace. So if something, so one of the years I, I prayed for something and it happened. So um, they say that you have to be Mafar same the nace. So you have to tell people, um, I've seen like videos circulate and go viral with like people who said I was praying for this, I was praying for that, and I just want to show you my letter from last year and look at the date, and now it came true, Bar Hashem. Usually, it's like for people who are praying for kids or yeah. you know, stuff like that, big deal. Yeah, but you can pray for anything. My kids were praying for, praying for like um, I think one of my sons wanted um, like a remote control car and got it this yeah. year, so he was so excited when he like opened it and saw. Well, that. I think it's also just it's also even if like it's. It's nice to teach our children that you could just write down on a note something that you want to daven for. Mm -hmm. And like leaving it under the menorah, it's just teaching, I think, like good values also in a sense, right? 100%. Um, Writing things out, which is so important. Yeah. Um, Right. And then another Indian of staying by the candlelight, like I think 
I think it's like 30 minutes. You have to, you should stay. Right. Woman, like even women are not supposed to work for 30 minutes after, Yeah, you're not right? supposed to work for 30 minutes. And also... Which is so nice, by the way. Like, yeah. even though it's like pressure, like, oh my is, gosh, I have to feed the family. I have to do this and that. It is so hard for me. Yeah. It's like it you're not supposed so to do hard. laundry. You're not supposed to do anything. Yeah. But it gives you a moment to kind of like daven and, 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 and pray. Stop and reflect and pray and connect. Happens to be, though, the, I find the best time for me to daven is put the kids to sleep. Yeah. Because <laughs> my kids are younger. Put the kids to sleep and then go downstairs and daven. And I have time. I could think, you know. Right, right. As long as it doesn't take too long. And by the way, um, the oil has to be there for like 30 minutes, right? We said that. But also we should just... The oil has to be enough that it's lit for 30 30 minutes. minutes. Right, Right. yeah. At least. If it turns off on its own, you don't have to relight it. Um, also, we all know that the the kedusha of the of staring at the Hanukkah candles like um, enhances your neshama. I know that sounds very fluffy, but that's really what it does. And I also heard another story that it helps with like shmirah sinayim. I saw, I heard it from. Um, I'm not sure which speaker, but I remember hearing that. Um, it helps with Shemir Sinai. So anything you saw for that year that wasn't appropriate for your eyes to see, it like cancels that out. Wow. That's what I heard. So, wow. um, so there's a, a huge power there, right? So I, you know, uh, taking that time, but it's really hard for me. I don't know. It's not hard for you to like sit for, because I'm always clearing up after dinner. We're running to make sure we get to somewhere on time. We're, right. do, we're still like, there's still homework. There's still school during the week, you know, actually well, there's a homework. homework. There's a homework. No, right? My daughter just came home saying, she's like, mommy, we don't have homework for the, for Hanukkah. And really? I'm like, okay. yes, thank goodness. I hate right. homework. I hate homework. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's so important. Okay. I have to really like focus on this. That's, uh, it's hard for me to sit at that hour. Okay. All right, so let's move on to safety, fire safety. Yeah, um, so we were just discussing about leaving, going to parties, going somewhere. Um, in the end of the day, fire safety is very important. There's so many fires that happen during Hanukkah, on Hanukkah. I know Shmira in LA, they send out a fire safety message every year. Mm-hmm. Um, so we, we actually just asked, and to confirm, but after 30 minutes of your candle being lit, if you're leaving it's okay to turn it off just for fire safety. It's not safe for it to be on while you are not home. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing that actually Rena just told me about, she sent me a video about that yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um, it was the blanket, right? The fire blanket. So I actually just ordered it. Um, I ordered you one also. Yeah. So you're going to leave it. So what we are planning on doing with this is... Um, creating a video, right? We like were going to create a video, video. Which, which we'll send out. But yeah. it's actually leaving your fire blanket by your menorah. So... Chas v'shalom, in any yeah. case, if there's yeah. a fire, the blanket, it's really cool. All you do is just throw the blanket directly on the fire and it extinguishes the fire right there and then. Yeah, like really quickly. Really like quickly. We've seen videos on it. It looks really cool. Also, it's important to have one of these in your kitchen. Yeah. Like, like when you're I, cooking. Or- yes, the toaster, the oven. Like, you know, it. Uh, there's fires that are... I mean, hopefully it's not like an everyday occurrence, but like a fire spreads so quick. Yeah, and also making sure... This always gets me nervous. Um, making sure your menorah is stable oh, <laughs> on so it's a stable like shaky. shaky yeah uh-huh. it's like put, um, like putting foil around just being being safe with it be cautious yeah. you have kids around that, who are going right. to bang into the table right. make sure it's secure and put i heard around like, it. i heard like one of the common ways is that it catches onto curtains so yeah be very careful with that um shades anything around like even i was thinking about it last year i put streamers up mm-hmm. um and it was right on top of my menorah and then and then I think my one of my kids said, um, can we move it somewhere else? And it actually fell down. And I was thinking, I'm like, wow. imagine it fell directly on the menorah. That would have caused a fire. Yeah. Um, wow. But it's just things to ha- keep like, in mind. Yeah. like uh, Yeah, and if you weren't home. If we weren't home. Yeah, God forbid, yeah. Even yeah. if we weren't home, that's really scary. Right. You know? And we light, we Jewish people light candles every Friday night. But typically we're home, right? Like yeah. we're, women don't usually go to shul Friday but night. But it's also not like seven candles. It's, <laughs> it's not. Just, it's yeah. just two, which, yeah. you know. But I'm saying like we do do that, but it's just not the same. And we're not running out of the house and whatever. Um, also, just have in mind, um, I think another thing to have in mind and look for is make sure your smoke detector t- detectors are actually working. There are batteries inside. Just a few things to keep in mind. We're not trying to scare you. We're right. just uh, alerting, you. alerting you, informing you. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay, now let's talk about food and the guilty pleasures that surround it. <laughs> so I was reading in the Family First magazine actually this past week because it was like the Hanukkah edition. I think it was the family. Maybe it was the Ami. But um, they were talking about like, I think it was a psychologist writing in about how we feel during this time of the year. So most of us feel very guilty when we're biting into a donut, 
Do you not feel guilty? Yeah. Well, no, it's, not, it's like a million calories and it's... <laughs> yeah, I don't... Yeah, right. And it's just covered in oil and... <laughs> covered in oil, like, yeah, yeah. So, so she was saying, the psychologist was saying, like, you have a decision. You have control. You, have, you, you can't... Like, it's very hard for you to say, like, no, I will not have any donuts for all eight nights. Um, and she said, if that's your decision, then that's your decision, but own it. So it was, I thought, I thought it was very interesting because she was almost saying so much, but nothing at the same time. I don't get it. Like she was trying, she was trying to say like, this is, you have to sit and think about your decision versus telling yourself like, um, I have no control. Like donuts are going to really like just take over me. Like food controls me. Know that you control food. I thought it was just an interesting perspective. So, so she's she said, saying, don't eat the donuts or eat the no, donuts? No, no. She's not telling you what to do at all. <laughs> okay. She she was not saying what to do. She was just saying, it's important to listen to your feelings and say, oh, maybe tonight on day number four, I'm in the mood for a donut. Do I have to have a donut every night? Let's think and evaluate it. She was very much talking about like reflecting and under, I think that would drive me crazy, honestly. I, I don't think so much about eating food, but of course, if you're having suganio and then you're having lakis and then you're having other fried foods, along with your dinner every night, that's a lot of guilt. Mm -hmm. So t I'm not, okay, again, her point was to just think and be mindful before consuming anything, but making your decision and being in control of that decision versus being upset that the, that the food is controlling you. Does that make sense? Yes. So, yes. so okay, fine. <laughs> okay. So basically <laughs> having it, making a decision and owning it, right. being in control Yes. versus the food controlling you and going into a situation where there's food all around right. and there's donuts all around and you're constantly feeling guilty about taking a little bite here and there. Is that right. what you're saying? Right. So just like yeah, make up your mind, go right. with it. And with by it. the way, it almost never helps to be like, I will not have a donut for all eight days. It does help. I mean, I find this true for myself. I don't know. I think most people would be true for it. I, you try to like have just a like a nibble like every night just a little bite like no yeah. like it's all moderation or, right yeah have your kids left over <laughs> you shouldn't you know, do what we did in seminary uh yeah. i was just telling rena we had girls in seminary who would do um oh, no. it was called the donut challenge yeah. and you had to eat one like a donut uh, for how many candles you lit oh, that night so by seven <laughs> when you're lighting seven <laughs> candles you're eating seven donuts oh, yeah. it yeah. was and then they came home crying and depressed. I, I really what? don't understand it. I don't understand it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't know if I would do that. But whatever. The point is to be um, like to own your decision and to think and to be mindful before you um, inhale calories because we all know women end up feeling so guilty when we overeat. Okay, now Hanukkah gifts. Um, what do you, how do you feel towards them? Because I, growing up, we would not get, I mean, once I got older and we were teenagers mm -hmm. and we actually asked for it and we did it ourselves, we got Hanukkah gifts. But it mm -hmm. wasn't a thing in, in Jewish, like in Jewish homes to do mm -hmm. Hanukkah gifts. Like every night. Every night. <laughs> right. And our kids like kind of expect that now. Yeah. Like my kids are like, eh, all my kids, all my friends get a gift every single night of Hanukkah. Yeah. My do daughter was just asking I me. I think you did that. No. You're one of those No, I friends. did one. <laughs> no? No, no. Oh, okay. No. Okay. Well, happens to be that, was it last year or two years ago, Tikva and I wrote a little column in the Family First regarding this idea. Was it Family, was it family First? First? I don't or remember. Maybe it was LA Jewish Home. I don't know. Whatever. Anyway. We wrote up a little thing of what I did with my family because my kids were very upset that they were one of the few kids. I mean, they always say this. Or they're the only ones in the class who didn't get um, I'm the gift only one who, who doesn't get, get this. Every night. <laughs> so, And we only gave them one gift, um, if anything, um, for Hanukkah. So every kid, every kid got one gift for the whole Hanukkah. So what we did was we um, did a little Gorel. We put all our kids' names in a box, um, and then each kid had to select a name, and that kid, they would have to um, take the money that we allotted for them. So every kid got 25 or 30 bucks. I don't remember what it was. Um, we handed them the money, and they shopped for the kid that they selected. So. And so in that way, um, first of all, they all know each other very well. They're siblings. Wait, I like what you did, though. You missed the yeah. part about that. She actually goes to Target. Oh, with them, um, and yeah. with them and they all scatter out and yeah. go choose something for their sibling which I love because they're at that moment going shopping and by the way you can do this in the Dollar Tree too mm -hmm. if you have younger kids and they're easy, uh, easy mm -hmm. to um, appease, appease. Yeah. you don't have to do this in Target mm -hmm. um, you can do like here's a three dollar limit and then mm -hmm. they can go get three things for the other person yeah. um, Walmart's cheaper but I love have a Walmart close by yeah, right <laughs> yeah. um, 
but I just love this idea because first of all, you're getting something for someone else. It's not yeah, getting something for yourself. It's taking away the selfishness. Especially if there's of, like sibling rivalry. So yeah. um, two of my kids like, you know, had you know, whatever. Well, they were like, what? Why did I get that person? But it was actually perfect. They had to like really connect and think of what that person. And they ended up getting something that person would got for them, get for themselves. Um, so it was very meaningful to them. Yeah, so I think that's that's like a fun. Well, experience. there's also there always I don't know if, like there's a known thing that when you give something to someone, mm-hmm. when you're constantly giving, mm-hmm. you're automatically going to start liking them more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like a yeah. thing. Like it's like mm-hmm. when you don't like someone, start giving to them. Right. Because then you're going to start liking them. Right. Um, so yeah. I guess there's that concept too. <laughs> right. That's true. You pair kids up that don't get along. Right. And also, it's a fun activity. We spend like two hours at Target on that Sunday. So it was fun, you know, and they, yeah. and by the way, they, um, we took each of them out to the checkout line. So they did not see each other's, they didn't see each other's gifts. So once we got home, they had to wrap it up and put it away until we presented it to each other. That's really cute. Yeah. That's a very cute idea. Yeah. And it was a big surprise. And only one of my kids, my younger one, ended up very, very disappointed with what the other person selected. But as parents, we try really hard to monitor and because we know our kids the best. So we, you know, we try to monitor and see what would be best and approve every single gift, you know? Right. Um, someone actually reached out. So I figured, I figured we'd address it here on the podcast is someone reached out asking for Hanukkah activities. Yes. So number one, this could be a Hanukkah activity. Um, we, whenever we have a Hanukkah party at our house or even not a Hanukkah party, just with our kids, um, we do a huge dreidel game. Some years my husband actually gets coins from like the bank or we use Hanukkah gelt. Um, Trader Joe's actually has like a ton of those like for 125 or something for like mm. 25 Hanukkah gelt, mm-hmm. which is good. So we do that. It's like a huge Hanukkah game. I mean, huge dreidel game, which is so much fun. Mm-hmm. Um, we also have a video on how we made those. Remember the you use the potato puffs and you make a menorah out of that. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Go on our mommy life squad page. We actually have more than just that, right? On, I think we have, we have an that, ice cream donut. One. Right. Yeah. Check out our page. We, we also saw something. another activity, which was um, Rena just sent it to me. The star one. They wrapped something in chocolate. What was that? Was oh, pretzel yeah, sticks? like pretzel sticks. Yeah. In chocolate, and they uh-huh. they formed it into a mug in David. Yeah. And they just poured like blue sprinkles on it. Another cute activity. Yeah. Um, I think it's, uh, these are really cute to do on your own, but I think it's even like nicer to do with your kids. Like uh, otherwise, I don't. I, I don't know if I would potchka to do all this. Stuff. No, that I'm saying as activities. Yeah, I yeah, think activities like I don't think kids. it's something that you could. Yeah. Right. These are activities that you could do with the kids. All right, Tikva. Did we give them enough info? I think we did. Okay. Thank you for listening. Wait, and just by the way, um, let us know if Rina sounds tired because Tikva is saying Rina sounds tired throughout the whole podcast. Thank you very much. (laughs) And until next time, happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. Thanks for tuning in to our Mommy Life Squad podcast. And stay tuned for the next episode.